Hi everyone and welcome to my place. We have spent some time doing, wait for it, flowers of the past. So we've done the Flemish fruit and flower, we've done the Victorian, plus I shared how to make the vases painstakingly and embarrassed myself with how bad my application was. However, I did give you some tips and tricks. I also now thought that let's go and look at containers of the past. And here we have them, Jasper Weir by Asta, or some people call it Wedgwood. I've given you a whole heap of historical information to have a read about because I think it's just fabulous. And what I also think is really great is, Jasper Weir or Wedgwood have just celebrated their 250th birthday and I think that it's time we had these vases back into vogue. Now, it's probably a little bit bad of me to be copying, but the vases are very, very beautiful, they're very expensive, and you know I'm a little bit rough, but I can never ever find the size and shape of vase that I want, because you know how I like big flowers, so a little vase with two or three flowers in it is just beautiful, but what say you want to do something a little bit bigger? So. Jasper Weir or Wedgwood, they had many designers that they called on to design their embellishments and I just thought, well, I'll just do Astor's interpretation. So maybe Wedgwood or Jasper Weir might like me to come and work for them because it's just fascinating the story of how this was developed. The first thing to do is to paint them and the paint that I found, it's just a chalk paint and it's sort of like a I'm, I'm going to call it Wedgwood Blue, but the colour that I found was Forget Me Not, which is a perfect colour for what we wanted to do. So, the next thing I want to share is I'm painting onto glass. Tip from me to make it really, really stick on your vase. Do a watery coat to start with. Leave it to dry for 24 hours. I say 24 hours because the longer it is on, the better it's going to be. And then two top coats and allow to dry between each coat another 24 hours. So it's going to take you three days, even more, to get your surface primed and ready to put, to embellish. But the l more coats and the longer the, no, the longer the curing time between coats, the better it's going to be. So I'm not going to bore you with my painting because I've done lots of painting and I don't think that we need to do that. So I'm just going to demonstrate on this little jar here. And, oh, here's my glasses. <laughs> I thought they were lost. Okay, so from there, once you've got it painted, it's then time to put on the embellishments. And there are lots that you can get, but so this is the one. This is one that I've used. Well, there's lots, but this is one that I selected, and it's called E Flex, and they're sort of like a latex. And what I loved about the latex, as opposed to anything that was made with plaster of Paris, the latex is easier to fix to the exterior of your container. And when you're sticking it, you can get it. I didn't quite get this very this done very well, but I wanted to share with the plexi or the, the latexy ones, when you're gluey, you can get that to sit flat and nice. But I just needed to show you a bit, just what it looked like. And this one here, um, it's taken me probably about three attempts to get this to really stick flat and flush and you can also already see that there's one little bit there that still needs to be done but if you do it slowly it's going to be much much better in making sure that that's going to stick onto there so doing that means that it's going as I said you're going to get a nice flush stick but if you use something like this see what's going to happen look it's too thick and it's a bit hunky and it's also really hard to fix the, this is the plaster of Paris onto the surface so the flexi or the latex are the best. Right, then we come to glues. Not all glues are made equal. Do not try super glue because it doesn't work. It just does not. Don't use Mod Podge because that doesn't work. What you need to use is something like the F2, which is a contact adhesive. Now, the other thing that I discovered is with a contact adhesive, what you, know, you usually do is you glue one, you put the glue to one side, and then you put the glue to whatever's going to be fixed. You let it get tacky, and then you bring the two together, and it will stick 
like nothing. I actually got away with it, but going back to what I was going to say, the, I could only do little sections at a time. So a little spot of glue there and a little spot of glue there, let that go tacky and then hold it. And it doesn't take long to hold it, but there was no other way that I could actually get it to go right. So these are just the tips and tricks that I discovered as I was going. Okay, so as I said, these come in lots of different styles. They come in this color, which just looks like latex that's come out of the mold. But see how it just bends so much better. So what I did was I just put a coat of chalk paint on the top of it because, and the reason I used the chalk paint is because the pottery when it was first created was to give that sort of like bisky firedness to the pottery, which was all the rage. And I think it was Queen Charlotte who actually took to this like it was the greatest, latest thing and it went all over the world. And I think that Queen Charlotte was the one that said, yes, you can use my name as a sales or as a recommendation, which I thought was quite lovely. Right, the next thing to do is get my towel down. You need a towel, and as I said, it's always easier to work on a surface so that you can just roll up your towel so that you've got this nice little wee um, place. Oops, do that properly, Esther. Do it properly. I've so enjoyed doing this, and it's really lovely to be able to create something that is the size that you want to use it for. Okay, so that can just sit there. Um, once painted, allow to dry, and you will need two coats. Now, it also, you, you can get these lovely little wee things here, but once you put, because that moves, you have to be really careful because the paint will chip off it. So you might have to do some touch-ups once you're finished. Now, getting your E2 a glue, very, very, very carefully. I might use this. Oh, no, I'll use this one. Do I want this one? No, I don't. I want this one here. So it's just a matter of, oopsie daisy, I didn't want that to happen. Pull that off. And oh, see what happens when it comes out. Oh, 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 because I've been a bit rough with it. Okay, so very, very gently, because they say this doesn't dry to be... Trans, uh, to be op uh, translucent, it dries the colour that it comes out, which is this gumminess, like so, put that down to there. You can always go round afterwards and put a few more bits on, you know, put some more glue onto it, because we want it to be sitting flush and flat. Now, put the lid on as soon as you're finished, and you might need to give that a wipe, bit of kerosene or turks will fix that. Then you need to be patient. So let's just pretend that we've waited until it's really gluey and tacky and let's just fix it on top of our surface. So there was a little wee, I love this, see that little raised and dented bit there? That just gets put down and onto there and then you just hold it, holding, 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 holding until that fuses and adheres to the surface, taking that round, and then there's a little bit round there, but that's okay, we'll just leave that. And just leave it, and the other thing that I did was, this is parchment or baking paper. This is your best friend. leave it for a couple of hours and then when you come back you will find that it looks just like this. I hope for those of you who want to make vases of the past that this was something that has tickled your fancy and something that you might like to do and might I just add out before I go two or three looks really nice with the odd flower in it. Next time I see you, I'll show you what flowers I like to put into these. See you again another day.